But the other happy part is the people that we don't know. That is, <laughs> thank you for being here. Yes? So okay, guys, so floor is yours. Do we need to wait or can we start? Just go ahead. That's okay. Cool. I think we can you. <laughs> okay, uh, hello. Thanks a lot for joining our call uh, about uh, Citellus. Um, so, this is Pablo Renzo, Pablo Carana, and my name is Martin Schuppert, and we are working in Red Hat in the support organization for OpenStack. Um, and yes, so we want to give you a short introduction of what Citellus is and what you can do with it. So what, what is Citellus? Um, Citellus is basically a script framework um, enhanced with plugins. So to detect known issues, known configuration mistakes, or issues in locks. Um, and it can be easily extended um, as it has the plugin architecture, to which we uh, come later in the slides. Um, first of all, how, how did this all start? Um, so Robin Chernin, um, who is uh, not here because he relocated to Australia a couple of uh, weeks or months now ago, um, <laughs> started this uh, during, during a weekend shift when he had to analyze a big environment and check a lot of things on, 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 on hopefully the same kind of uh, configuration. And yeah, then he started uh, with, a, with, a, with a simple shell, shell wrapper and pr uh, doing some plugins um, to check all those configuration and locks. Um, later then, after further discussion with uh, Pablo, uh, Robin, and also some other from the um, Red Hat Engineering Group, they modified it, replaced the shell wrapper, doing it in Python to have more flexibility and can enhance this uh, for future features. Uh, we still have we still have the the, the plugins, so there's uh, that the chance there was no change, and yeah, so it's easy to enhance like this, and we got a lot of performance improvement at also doing that change. So what what can we do with it? Um, so basically, in support, we work a lot with SOS reports. I'm not sure if. Any, uh, all of you know what SOS report is, uh, so the half we know now. <laughs> uh, so SOS basically is a tool which collects uh, system configuration, logs, and uh, other important information from a system, uh, which they then report an issue to, to the Red Hat support. And so with Citellus, we can either run those uh, checks we implemented in or provide with Citellus, against the SOS port or uh, also against the live system. Um, so with this, we identify the known or common issues uh, really fast um, because it it's, takes about two seconds to run over the SOS port with the plugins we right now have. Um, and also, it's really um, easy to extend this tool with, with new checks. And this is my, the, my, uh, our main goal, so that keep it simple and that everyone who uses this and ha it has no deep um, coding knowledge can extend it for, for its own needs. So let's give me some uh, live or examples from our daily work. What uh, is going to be checked? What have we seen a lot of issues with? Um, so within OpenStack, we have the Keystone tokens and there's a, a job cleaning up the expired Keystone tokens uh, regularly. And we had uh, issues in the past with either too many expired Keystone tokens and the job did not finish. And also there were some, um, some bug within, within, the key, uh, within the cleanup job that if you had too many tokens, expired tokens in the database, it could not uh, cope up with them. So this is one example. The other thing is, for example, in telemetry, the telemetry service from, uh, from OpenStack, the default configuration is that it does not expire the collected data. So if you um, do not change this, um, you, and depending on what backend you, you use, you may end up with filling all your, uh, uh, your disk space 
as, for example, if you use the Mongo database as the backend for this, then the Mongo database grows until the uh, disk space is filled up and you're, um, yeah, so you get an outage of that. Uh, the third example I want to mention here is that within OpenStack, um, a lot of different um, services and different systems talk to each other using MQP. And MQP is a real time sensitive thing, so we've seen or we regularly see um, issues if either the NTP service doesn't work correctly, cannot reach its upper source, or it's even disabled, so you see services flapping, going up and down, and as a result, um, you probably end up not being able to schedule your new instances. So, um, in general, we have over 120 uh, plugins right now, um, and yeah, there's more coming. Here we have a quick overview about what plugins we have at the moment implemented. So um, this, the, those are the categories. So we have uh, checks for specific Bactillas, um, where you also see, right now you can see it's uh, OpenStack focus, but it can be easily extended to, to other products, um, base rel things like um, this. Um, so we have Bactillas, we have uh, 45 checks for OpenStack for, and there for the um, Nova MySQL, Cinder, whatever you can imagine, we have code there. So what, what is our main goal with this? Um, the main goal is really to keep the checks as simple as possible and let the user decide in which language he can create new plugins. Uh, right now, most of the checks are just simple shell scripts. Um, but we also have some, some in Python. So with this, it should be that anyone who can write shell scripts contribute to this and uh, submit new plugins. So this shows, I hope it's, I, guess, I hope you can see it. Um, so this uh, shows uh, how you can run Citellus. So here we see, see that it uh, was run against an SOS support from one of the controllers. And you see here in each line is one of the checks. Um, and at the end of the line you see either the um, check was skipped because it's not valid for this uh, system, it was, uh, got identified that it, it can be skipped here. Um, we see some of the OKs, and right in the bottom, um, we see one of the failed uh, checks. This was, uh, is an example for one which I mentioned before, but for the kilometer expiration settings were missing in the configuration, and you may end up in future to have an outage because of this. Yes, if you go to the end of the line, there is a three. Sorry. If you go to the end of the line, there is three lines that give you the hinds. What will be wrong? Okay, uh, thank you, Martin. And uh, basically, uh, the idea of this is uh, standard idea of, of the plugins is basically having any system administrator started as a support engineer that most of people can get some basic of bash, but uh, you can basically write it in uh, Python or another language, and including there are plugins that can connect to Ansible if you want to check something or get some data really for live. Yes, uh, if I move uh, too much outside the micro, should let me know, or say it's too close. Yes, basically there is also the option to export data to JSON. So if this uh, JSON file is also easy to feed or HTML output, that usually is a nice starting point for more people if you want to integrate to a dashboard. And uh, there is an option to save and restore uh, any, any, any defaults if you want to change it and restore back. Okay, this is a small example of how the HTML output looks that is generated for the change of file. Uh, home is basically grouped around different different components. Yes, it can be integrated by uh, some particular family groups. Yes, that can be expanded. And the most important is we are looking 
for more help. That is the reason why we, this uh, tool is sharing in GitHub as an upstream project. The idea is not be only consumed for particular product. Most of our focus currently are open stack issues, configuration issues, and so on, but extending with Meltdown and other things for the general Linux, it can be useful for more people, yes? Um, the most important is uh, we're trying to push this plugin first to be consumed for more people, and then we, we can consume internally. So the idea is after fears. That's come also for the Red Hat motto. Uh, basically, uh, the way to contribute is ideally pushing some kind of uh, test on plugin. If not, you can start generating some ideas, uh, what they want to check. Uh, more focus currently, you can imagine that is focused on open stack, rel, sent of kind of elements, but as a report run also on Debian and other systems, so it can be consumed, yes? Uh, we have also for other elements like pacemaker that can be there, or if you are consuming some kind of rehab network, can be also used in that way. This come also for conversation why this uh, framework was created. Uh, mainly, uh, we have uh, consuming internally a lot of tools like ASOS, but basically shows a nice way to consume the, the data is already there, presented with some graph, but it's not adding any extra height of what to check, yes? Basically, the idea with the plugin is only not pointing a potential error, so giving you know, some extra height what will be correlated with other configurations. Uh, triple validation, as we work a lot with OpenStack, triple validations is a good idea. Probably we can consume and reutilize part of the plugins, but works uh, against live systems. And we, we want to have the option to work also against uh, a snapshot or report. That is mainly that Reha support uh, or any, uh, any support does. We cannot generate all the, the tests uh, against live system, but currently we have uh, integrating in the plugins, in plugins a way to do it, yes? <coughs> like checking if your database is going extra big fact, yeah. This is part of, part of the slide that uh, it was mentioned partially in the, uh, in the other ones, but um, what we are expecting is um, People will get interested in, uh, on this, getting some ideas, uh, open issues, that also give you an idea, one to log not only for us. Mm -hmm. And um, the other element that we consume from support is, as a report for us is uh, basically our input file. Sorry, sorry, I was moving to website. Yes, the, the Italian, has, uh, I need to keep the the hands in one position, sorry. So basically that's the report is really our uh, mainly input for that and it's already integrating in more uh, Red Hat uh, platform channel products, yes? But if you are consuming sentence, it can be installed, SUSE, Debian, and other variants, OpenSUSE, it can be also there. And this is the time for Pablo. Okay, thank you. So let's do a quick overview. We have covered why and the thing is how it's working under the hood. Uh, the idea, as my colleagues mentioned, is that we want it to be really easy to code new things. We know how to do right cell scripts. We do use grep, work out, whatever, to find information into the logs and use that to, to do, do the diagnosis and maybe point on the right way. So just the idea is if Telus is a wrapper, it will execute what you are putting it but the idea to have some data which is later consumable, like we were seeing on the, on the screenshot before, is that we are uh, completing to some standards. The thing is that uh, we are finding the test in a folder, we are returning different return codes, the <laughs> reporting which the plugin has been executed okay, has been skipped, has failed, and there are the things we are later reporting. So uh, as my colleagues were saying, the framework is in Python. This allows to do parallel execution, which allows, uh, for example, for a standard source report to get a report under two seconds, which is very good. And uh, the idea is that uh, we can also use that data for other things. As we were able to we are outputting to JSON, and this JSON can be loaded into the web interface or can be used or consumed by other programs. So the plugins, as I was mentioning, they are writing in whatever language of choice. You are outputting the messages you want to be captured on the standard error. 
uh, we have tried to uh, run away from some, some of, the, of the standards to make sure that when we get an error, it's the something we are generating. Like we are not returning zero, one, or two, which is are the standards. We are returning different codes, but we are using variables for that. This allows us to catch errors which may be in our coding in the scripts. So just simple thing, we are putting RC OK, RC fail, or RC skip, depending on the status. We are exporting that variable, so you just need to consume that for the environment. We are putting to standard error. And uh, if you want to use internalization, you can do that from on the Python side or even bash using the, the scripts. OK, uh, how we are providing information about the environment? Uh, we say that we can run in live mode or we can run from a source report. The idea is that we are exporting two variables, Citellus live, meaning uh, 0 or 1, depending if we are running against a live system or we are running against a source report. And if we are running against a source report, we are also providing the root folder for that. So we know where we need, what we need to use as the starting path for everything. Live tests, of course, can query database, can do other fancy things, but with source report, we are just uh, limited to what we have there. And also having in consideration that different versions of source reports have different files in <coughs> different locations. But the idea is that it's more or less a standard. Some example, uh, in this case, just you don't need to focus a lot. It's we are checking just the disk space. We are executing a command. And we are just returning that information. How to do a deep dive on the test? The thing that we were mentioning, we are covering mostly OpenStack because it's what we are facing daily. But uh, the only thing is that, as we were mentioned, the test, the first thing it needs to do is to check if it should run or not. If it's depending on OpenStack and requires a specific package, it's not there, just skip the test and go on. And for the other test, just what you will do. Grab, work on, whatever. Who you will start a new plugin? Just drop a new file, make it executable, in this case a shell script, and just follow the requirements we were mentioning. Write on code, RC OK, fail or skip. The message to be printed to the standard error, if it's against a source report, you will have Citellus root populated. And if it's against a live or a source report system, you will have Citellus live either with zero or one. So how we will do a test, for example, if we have Hobby, Obert hosted engine installed, what we will do on, the, on a source report will be to check against the installer PMs file. If we are on a live system, we will be, in this case, reporting that this, plug this plugin is not supported for running in live mode. Uh, as we were coding several scripts, it's started to become a problem to re be repeating some of the functions. So we did some wrappers. So in this case, we are loading the wrappers, the second line on the screen, mm -hmm. and we are just checking with a function which I, uh, we call is RPM if the RPM is installed. This function is already taking care if it's running live or not. So we will be uh, comparing against the install RPMs file on a source report or against RPM minus query against the package. So the tests are even more simpler and shorter in, in size. Why to test it? Uh, we have Tox, which is uh, used in several OpenStack projects as well. It creates a virtual environment for Python. It's executing some unit tests, and among those tests, it's also running live, running the source repos, and trying to catch everything which is not covered. For example, if we have one test which we have caught badly, and there is a missing if, something which is not covered, or we are getting the output directly from a program, we will be, we will be getting a different error code outside of uh, OK, fail, we, and we will categorize that, I don't know. We'll fail the the unit test, and you will know how to, how to, how to fix it. Bad thing about Citellus, it just works on individual source repos or individual systems. But in OpenStack, for example, we are facing a lot of systems at the same time. For example, for a standard deployment, we are getting at least three source repos, each one from one of the controllers. And sometimes we want to compare about anomalies between this, those systems. Or even we want to check uh, two different source repos from two points in time from the same system. And you want to see what has changed between one and the, other, and the next one. For that, we started creating Maggie, which allows to do this check across different source reports. And one of the things that is to check uh, using Citellus, we are not reinventing the wheel here. We are running against each one of the source reports. We, uh, the additionally, it has some plugins, so it can compare different things. And as well, it uses Ansible Playbook in order to gather data from remote hosts. So you can use locally, check against a lot of systems, and get the data back, and then report on screen. How does it look like? Very simple. Just the command. Uh, in this case, it's including the filter for sequence number. And it's providing the output for that system across different hosts. Sorry, I will show you. Controller one, sequence number in Galera, one host has, an, has a higher number than the other. So next steps, 
Brightmap plugins because we are doing some some of them for comparison about the different data we are getting from from them. We are getting metadata, like for example, rel release, so we can compare in an environment that you have different releases, which should not be the the proper setup, silometer, etc. It's something that you can extend very quickly. Action items for now for everything: Citellus and Maggie, add more plugins. Uh, try to get people writing new plugins for it. It's easy, it's not related just for OpenStack. Everything could do, uh, the containers, OpenShift, whatever you can imagine, is just executing that. And of course, trying to get people contributing to have this moving. The thing is that we are using it, and I think that others could benefit for, for this. And of course, as we were saying before, with Maggie, we can add that logic to detect problems which are scattered across different systems, like for example, different NTP server. So, time for questions. If anyone has some question, please go ahead. Martin will be answering. <laughs> I only hold in the micro. Repeating the question, uh, yes, correct me if I'm wrong. You say that uh, in order uh, to do the check from the under cloud, execute the test against the different hosting environment and get the, the data as periodic basics. At the moment, it's just a script. So if you provide the, the host list, if you are using an Ansible host file, it's just put in the name of the host. If you need a specific user or credentials to log in, you can put that. For the, by default, it's using become. So if you are launching for the hit admin user or, or the stack user, it should be able to become root and execute everything and grab the data back and then output the information. Basically, with Ansible, the, the dynamic inventory, you can run it. So you can call directly a, play, a script that already exists or your own playbook. More questions? At the moment, no, but uh, one of the things that uh, Insights team is going to change the, the tool, uh, the way it's now, and they are going to prepare it to be able to consume data from other systems. So one of the things I was in the in discussions with Wesley from the Insights team, uh, and they were interested if we were able to generate JSON, and JSON is the file by, by default we are creating for this analysis. But in fact, one of the things that we were doing is that for when you are doing repeated execution over different hosts, because you want, for example, to use different filters, uh, we are storing the data we are gathering on disk, if it's writable, and we can consume from that. So it's something very easy consumable. In fact, just the web interface is just consuming from the sa that that's same specific JSON we are generating for each run. In short, um, not for going in details, but inside have probably a few rules, directly for OpenStack, more in platform, and basically we were feeding them with the rules. Anyone else? Don't be shy. <laughs> okay, just in case uh, you have there the URL for the mailing list. There are some blog posts, so you can find more information. If you check on GitHub, you can have uh, so some more information about it. So, yes, let us know. And my as my colleague said, if you have any idea, something which is not yet implemented, or just something to discuss about the future evolution, just open an issue in GitHub. We will check that. As we are working in support, we are not full-time developers for it, but we will do what we can do in order to, to improve it. And it was mentioned in the slide, there is a free node channel with the same name. And at the beginning of the presentation was also put it directly the hiccup. Yep. Also, the slides are available in the GitHub repo. So I'm putting just the initial slide there. So if you want there. You, you can find it under the, doc, the documentation folder. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much thank for, for attending.